In the last decade, we've learned a huge amount about the psychology and neurology of focus. And one of my favorite examples to learn what we know about focus comes from the story of the flight of Qantas 32, a plane that took off from Singapore in 2010, headed towards Sydney, Australia. About 20 minutes into this flight, this huge plane, an Airbus A380, had the worst mid-air mechanical disaster in modern aviation. Within just seconds, 22 of the 24 major systems that are needed to keep a plane aloft, they were all knocked out. And the pilot sitting in the cockpit, suddenly they look at their board and there's all these alarms going off. Now what's interesting about these pilots is that they had been trained in a way of thinking that's known as situational awareness, or building mental models. Or put differently, they had been taught to tell themselves stories about what's going on as it occurs. Because what we know about how our brains work is that by telling ourselves stories, we teach those almost unconscious parts of our brain to distinguish between what's important and what isn't almost automatically. And when this mechanical disaster occurred, if you listen to the cockpit recordings, it's almost as if those pilots are reading from a script. They're talking to each other in these calm, measured sentences. Everything that happens inside that cockpit is as if it's been practiced. And in 99% of accidents, that would have been just fine. That would have saved everyone on board. But the problem with Qantas Flight 32 is that there were so many problems that every time they fixed one emergency, five more would, would pop up. As the pilots were sitting there trying to figure out what to pay attention to and how to fix the problem, they found that they were becoming overwhelmed. There weren't enough scripts in their heads, enough mental models to accommodate all of the emergencies. And so the head pilot, a guy named Richard Krebny, he did this kind of interesting thing. He takes his hands off of the controls in the middle of this emergency. He closes his eyes and he thinks to himself, I need a simpler mental model. So he decides to start imagining Qantas Flight 32, an Airbus A380, one of the largest, most sophisticated airplanes on Earth, he decides to start thinking about it as a Cessna, the plane he had learned to fly on. And by now they had managed to turn around this huge plane and start heading back to the Singapore airport. And as they're coming closer and closer to the runway, De Krebny starts thinking to himself and saying to his colleagues, we need to just imagine this plane as a Cessna. And as they're approaching, this alarm goes off, what's known as a squealer, an alarm so loud and ear splitting that it can actually revive pilots who are near unconsciousness. And De Krebny turns to his colleagues and he says, ignore that alarm because if we were flying a Cessna, it wouldn't go off. They touch down onto the tarmac, and if de Krebny had been flying a Cessna, what he would have done at this point is he would have just braked once, because that's how you fly a Cessna, and you land it. The plane is speeding down the runway. They only have 2,000 meters of runway, and it's surrounded by sand dunes. If they overshoot at too high a speed, the plane will flip over and kill everyone on board. And as de Krebny presses down on the brake pedal, and they're getting closer and closer to the end of the runway, the metal of the plane is groaning as it's trying to slow, and it gets slower and slower, and then stops with 100 meters to spare. 469 passengers all walked off that plane. There wasn't one casualty, there wasn't even one injury. They've tried to recreate that landing in simulators hundreds of times, and every single time, the plane crashes and everyone dies. If you ask him why he was able to do that, he'll tell you that he doesn't really know. Maybe thinking of the plane as a Cessna was the right mental model to use, or maybe he was just lucky. But what he will tell you is this, is that the only real mistake he could have made when he was trying to land that plane is to stop making decisions, to stop thinking. And oftentimes when we're overwhelmed by information, when we're at the office and our phone is buzzing and there's a hundred emails coming in and our boss wants something and a colleague wants us to go sit in, a, in on a meeting, it's like being in the cockpit of a plane that has an emergency. We're overwhelmed with information and the easiest thing to do is to stop making choices. But the people who are productive, they're the ones who encourage themselves to make choices, who find some story they can tell themselves that allows them to decide, this is worth paying attention to, and this one I can ignore until later. And when you do that, that's when you're in charge of your focus. That's when you get to land the plane.